I was watching this movie a long, long time ago. It was called Confessions with Alec Baldwin and Ben Kingsley. It's a great movie. Check it out if you can find it. Confessions. There was this pivotal moment in the movie when Alec Baldwin, who I believe was the attorney, was saying something about doing the right thing. And Ben Kingsley said, people don't have a problem doing the right thing. It is what is the right thing to do is the problem. Once they know what the right thing is, they do it. And that's what this day's video is about because many of you are in a situation where you don't know what the right thing is to do. And because you don't know what the right thing is to do, you do absolutely nothing because you're incapacitated and you're paralyzed. So in this video, we're going to discuss how getting past that hurdle is so important and it will get you moving and get you started. Once again, welcome to the channel. This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. And today I have something special for you. What we're going to do is launch a new program dealing with these issues. Now, if you are a paid in full or a you've paid in time or you're current with your payments, you'll get this. You don't have to email me. We're going to add you once again, because there's a we, but for those of you who want to take advantage of this offer, it'll be below the video with some details. All right. So let's get into this wonderful bean footage. What should you do first? What should you do second? What should you do third? And what should you do fourth? Many people want to start a business and it is increasingly difficult to do what they need to do because there's this false assumption that if you do something and it doesn't pan out that you're wasting time. Let me show you where you're really wasting time. I had a client who, because of this dilemma, this conundrum wasted eight years starting a business that they did not want to start. Let me say this again. They wasted eight years starting a business they did not want to start. Now, how did this break down? Seven years, they thought about starting the business. For seven years, they wanted it to be just right. They wanted it to be special. They wanted it to be on point. They did all of their research. They've projected income projections. Uh, they good credit, they had money saved, they had all of this stuff going for them. For seven years, they were getting ready for this moment. And then they did it and they found out that they hated it. Eight years wasted because they didn't take action, because they didn't know where to start. Because I told this person, I said those seven years, that was procrastination. That's what that was, that's all that was. So I'm going to give to you what I gave to him. You don't know what you want to do. There's so many options. There's so many things you want to do. Test, do micro test. And this is more than validation because validation is like a uh, email 20 people on Facebook. And if they buy that's validated, not necessarily. What you want to do is put together a working model of the product or service and move as fast as you can. Forget if you don't have the logo, forget if you don't have a domain, that all that stuff is just procrastination disguised as good judgment. That's all it is. Go, go, go. 30 days, hard as you can. And if at the end of 30 days, you're not getting any traction, and this isn't for some big complicated business. This is for something smaller, and even for a big complicated business, you can still do this, run your road, your, your runway really quickly to see what kind of results you get up with. Cause this is the thing that really creates a problem for many people. You're going to have to make moves. You're going to have to execute and it's not going to work out. Then you get demoralized. It's like, man, I was trying to do this. I was trying to make this happen and it didn't work out. News flash. Most of the things that most people do, don't work out. So what you're seeing as an atypical event is very normal. Fail, fail, fail. Oh, good. Fail, fail, fail. Oh, good. That's typically how it goes. So this is why you have to develop a really strong mental because when you're a kid, 
Go back to that time when you were fearless. Remember jumping off of this hill and grabbing a blind, uh, a vine. This is what we used to do. There was these trees that had these long vines and we used to take a running start because it was in the church, Mount Caramel Church. And we would jump off of this cliff because probably a 10 to 12 foot drop. And you got to understand, I was much shorter than I was than I am now. And I didn't think nothing of jumping off there and grabbing that vine and swinging and swinging hard and fast enough where I can get back on, on the land. What has happened to you in your adult life is you've been taught to be scared. You've been taught to take less chances. You've been taught to be risk adverse. There was this conversation on another channel like, how do you prevent STDs? And I don't think I did that video yet, but I was just gonna hold up a condom and that's it. There's really nothing else you need to talk about. But because people are so risk adverse, they wanna turn it into this, what I call a nothing conversation. You don't wanna get a chick pregnant. You don't wanna catch an STD, wear a condom. That's like a 15 second conversation, but they want to talk about this stuff and how to find a girl who doesn't have anything and all this other stuff because of fear. The average man has sex with 15 women in his lifetime. And I know you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, it's true because half of America gets married. Most people don't cheat. So if you're married 20 years, you get married at 20, and you get divorced at 20, 40, that's half your life, bruh. But once again, people have unreasonable fears of things that more than likely will not happen. And this is one of the things that we're gonna address in the new training because I get a lot of questions. And the questions are predicated on, if I do this, I'm gonna mess up. This is how I handle that. Whenever I'm trying a new endeavor, and I know there's a potential for risk. Number one, I minimize the risk by not putting too much into it. And number two, I ask myself this simple question. If I do this and it crash and burns, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? That's the question I asked myself. A long, long time ago, when my partner Francine and I were doing garage sales, we were making two to $3,000 a week out the, the garage. Someone narked on us and we kept going. You know what was the fine? $500. So that month that we got fined, we made like 15 grand minus 500 bucks, minus the cost of units. So we netted out at $10,000. Does that really sound bad? Let's take another thing. Credit cards that you have to pay an annual fee. So many people are predicated on getting something for nothing that they don't see that if you get a credit card that has an annual fee, like my American Express has an annual fee of 550 bucks, I have gotten enough points the first 30 days to mitigate that. So the rest of the year is just gonna be gravy uh, with the Uber, with the um, airline credit. Not a problem, not a problem at all. But because people are so risk adverse and they don't want to get started. And this is a very, very important part. Once you get started, you're going to figure out if this thing is for you or is it not for you? Going back to my client, eight years, seven years planning without really tasting it and experiencing it. Like me, uh, I, I really wanted to move to London. I was in love with the culture. It was just so romantic. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You've been here before. You all gassed up on these pretty streets and these pretty lights and all these old buildings. Do you really want to live here? So before I make that decision, I'm going to go to London six, seven, eight times and then really experience it and really get a feel for it. So you have to experiment as your first step. You have to experiment. And this is the thing that holds so many people back because they don't want to make a mistake. So anytime you find yourself in that conundrum, what's the worst thing that can happen? All right, that's all I have for you guys. Below is the training and how I'm gonna set it up and it's gonna be a detailed explanation. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.
it's time to go make some money.